In the depths of the Atlantic Ocean, a society waits in disarray, consumed not by government, not by religion. Instead, the cannibalistic nature of this dystopian society is that which is within. That man, in his insatiable hunger for power, is the destruction of rapture. Bioshock as a game offers more than just a marvelous atmosphere to explore. It offers the experience of fear, mystery, and desire to which the player can act upon as he or she pleases. But how can a game such as Bioshock truly deliver these experiences to the player? How can a game build its atmosphere further? To answer that question, we need to dive deep into the Atlantic and be washed over by the city of Rapture and truly see how music can build a game. Before delving into the musical analysis of Bioshock, we will first need to look at where and when the story takes place. Unlike most modern first-person shooters, Bioshock adopts the 1930s to 1950s aesthetic, which can be similarly compared to the Fallout franchise. However, unlike Fallout, which is a future post-apocalyptic game based in 2022-2023 of the near future, Bioshock takes place during 1954, where you the player take on the role of Jack, the silent protagonist, who is the victim of an unfortunate plane crash over the mid-Atlantic. To match the era and the overall theme of Bioshock, the game utilizes the 1930s, 40s, and 50s big band music with the occasional solo vocalist now and again. Songs like If I Didn't Care by The Ink Spots or Papa Loves Mambo by Perry Como and the iconic Beyond the Sea by Bobby Darin are just a few to name from the list of over a dozen songs licensed for the Bioshock soundtrack. Along with the list of licensed music, Bioshock also incorporates original work composed specifically for the game in the form of the official Bioshock original soundtrack, or OST for short. The music heard within the original soundtrack is meant to tie in with specific levels or cinematics scattered about throughout the game. Each song composed for the soundtrack directly correlates to what the player is immediately experiencing at a specific moment in time. For instance, when entering Neptune's bounty, the player can hear the sound of floorboards creaking and the faint playing of an accordion, along with the occasional violin playing in the background. With the sound of aged wood succumbing to the ocean waves, an accordion playing to imitate the beginning of an old sailor's sea shanty, along with the ominous bells ringing to simulate a pier or dock, Bioshock truly allows its levels and soundtrack to breathe, incorporating both in a simultaneous build, ultimately lifting the player and their environment. When listening to the original soundtrack, the player is greeted with orchestral music depicting the mysterious underwater environment while also alluding to how the city of Rapture was once beautiful. However, when comparing the OST or original soundtrack to licensed music, Bioshock utilizes both in a way that differ from one another. In essence, Bioshock utilizes orchestral music as a way to communicate to the player the true uncertainty and horror that is Rapture. Although the licensed music heard throughout each level, such as Beyond the Sea, can operate to the same level as the original soundtrack, another layer can be added to this analysis. Unlike the original soundtrack, the licensed music is that which can be heard by both player and the characters within the universe of Bioshock. 
by having the faint crackle of songs like Papa Loves Mambo playing within a broken record player, the immersion that the player is meant to feel is further enhanced by creating an environment that is lived in and enjoyed through music. That the levels you walk through were once thriving with people and now slowly decay with the haunting sound of what used to be. Bioshock further immerses the player by utilizing music to not only tell the story, but to elude to what the history and lore of the game is trying to show the player. Songs such as Beyond the Sea, which is a frequent piece played throughout the game, is almost mocking the player in their current predicament. As the main lyrics say, somewhere beyond the sea, my love is waiting for me. When in reality, the player is stuck somewhere under the sea, alluding back to the main lyrics of the song, while also being in perpetual danger of this dystopian reality that is Rapture. The song continues to taunt the player by telling them that they will never actually escape, putting the environment of Rapture into perspective as now the player truly believes that this would be their eternal resting place. Bioshock's ability to tell a cryptic dystopian world surrounded by the unfamiliar environment of the ocean truly separates it from the typical first-person shooter. But what truly encapsulates the unique story of Bioshock is the critique it offers on both political and religious aspects of society. Yet throughout the environment of Rapture, we see the importance of religion and politics, as without it, the society begins to crumble with no form of ethical code. Although absence of religion as a practice is shown through the ironic crucifixion of an individual smuggler who is bringing in Bibles to the underwater city, further implications of irony are shown when the gene-altering organic material called Adam, which the player constantly seeks out throughout the game, allows to see the heavy reliance on religion without the incorporation of God. But how is music truly incorporated into this irony? When entering certain levels and exploring certain regions, the player will occasionally hear the sound of a splicer, which are genetically altered victims of Adam, singing songs that are deeply rooted in religious practice, such as, Jesus loves me, this I know. Although brief and having little impact on the player and their choices, the attention to detail is substantial. As the splicer itself, along with the religious hymns, goes completely against what Rapture was meant to be. That being a society free from both the eyes of government and religion. Our last form of analysis looks at one scene in particular, that being the downfall of Sanders Cohen. About halfway through the progression of the game, the player enters Fort Frolic, a location known in Rapture for entertainment purposes, as theaters, casinos, nightclubs, and art exhibits populate the plaza the player can explore. Amongst the dilapidated rooms, we are greeted by Sanders Cohen, a spectacular visionist who had traveled to Rapture for its freedom of expression. However, when we the player interact with him, we see that he has been affected by Adam, which breaks the psyche of the user, having them go insane with frequent use of the drug. What truly drives Cohen's insanity and signifies to the player that Rapture has fallen into disarray is when Tchaikovsky's Waltz of the Flower begins to play. What's that look? You don't like it, do you? I don't need to be judged by you, by anyone! Screw you! Screw all you fucking doubters! Here's what I say to all of you!
Bioshock, like the City of Rapture, offers a variety of tastes to gamers. Whether the use of interesting gameplay mechanics, overall artistic style and atmosphere, depth and story development, or even the simplicity in music, Bioshock never ceases to impress its audience. The ways music and video games allow for players to immerse themselves into a fictitious world says more than any analysis can offer. To the effect that video games are forms of art, Bioshock offers a unique showcase of how music and game are built upon each other, creating layers to which the player can peel back in their own time and journey through a truly cathartic experience. Oh.